Hello everyone, welcome back to BIM Geek. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to randomly place objects into a topography. And we're going to create this beautiful looking forest model in Revit using Grasshopper. And the tree family that I have used in this tutorial is actually created by BIM Guru himself. Shout out to him. And if you want to use the exact family that I have used in this tutorial, just head over to courses.bimguru.education and download the basic Revit uh, project version 1.0. This model is being created by BIM Guru. It is a lot better in terms of modeling techniques and the level of detail. So if you want to use the, the tree family that I have used in this tutorial, just download the model and copy and paste it into your project. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start by opening the blank version of the same model. Then I'm gonna click on Grasshopper. And this is actually the final version of the script that we are going to create in today's tutorial. So I'm going to start from scratch. And let's start by referencing our topography from Revit. And there are actually a couple ways you can reference geometry from Revit. First, you can reference them as a graphical element. I'm going to type in graphical element. Right click on it and click on set one graphical element. So this method also works, but what I'm going to do is I am actually going to reference an entire category from Revit and that category will be topography, obviously. So let's just do that. I'm going to search for built-in built in categories. Then I'm going to type in my name, topography, and let's select topography. So I'm going to connect a panel to this. And this is actually a Revit category, but to make queries in Revit's database, we need to convert them into a filters. So I'm going to do that and let's connect a category filter. So now this is a element category filter. So let's get elements belonging to this category. Query elements node just does that and it actually expects a filter. So we get a category from the built-in categories nodes. We have converted it into a category filter, which is a filter. Then now we can connect this as the filter input. I'm just gonna remove limit. And so what we get from the query elements is our Revit topography. So since we have defined a rule, even if I add any more topographies, they all will be referenced in Grasshopper. So now this is actually a Revit element. Let's convert it into a Rhino geometry. To do that, I'm going to use element geometry node. I'm going to connect it as the elements input. So what we will get in return is polyline curves, line-like curve, and a mesh geometry. Let me start Rhino. So this is what we get in Rhino, actually. So these are polyline curves. Then I have a line-like curve and the mesh surface itself. So the exciting part is populating random points on this geometry. So if I connect populate geometry, which generates random points on a geometry, on a surface, so I'm going to connect this as the input. So what we will get in return is populate geometry node also places random points on these curves as well. So I need to filter them. I only need the mesh part. And it's quite easy filtering geometries by their type using Elefront. So I'm just going to search for filter by type. And let's connect our geometry. And our, let's connect a value list as the object type. Then from here, I need to filter mesh geometries. So what I will get from here is only the mesh geometry. Now if I connect this as the geometry input, as you see, random points generated on the mesh surface itself. We can actually control the count of numbers, the seed, the points, etc. So I'm just going to type in maybe 150 for the number of points. Now as you can see, I can control the number of points generated on this topography. So these points actually will be the location points for our components, for our objects in Revit. And I am going to add component to this point using 
add component by location node. So this node expects two things actually. The first one is the location points, which comes from the populate geometry node. Then we need to define the family type that we are going to use. Let's reference our tree family that I showed you at the beginning. So I'm just gonna get select my tree, find its type name in the project browser. I'm just gonna copy its name, come back to Grasshopper. Then I'm gonna paste that as a panel. So I need to find the family type that has this exact name. And there is a node called query types in Grasshopper, which allows us to get the family types from Revit by doing different things. For instance, I can reference types by their family name, by their category, by their kind, and by their type name. Let's connect our panel as the type name. So what we will get in return will be the family type that has this exact name. So now we are pretty much done actually. So we have our location point, which comes from populate geometry. Then we have our tree family type. So let's connect our points as the location and our type and voila. Just like that, we have placed object randomly into a topography. I can actually control the number of points. So let me, for instance, increase the number, maybe 165. Let's make it 100 again. Or I can actually control the seed. I'm going to connect a slider in here. Now the distribution is, has changed. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new in this video and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.